Oh, hello, hello, friends. I'm super excited. Tonight we are talking about habits, and habits has all of the big things included into it. Um, we're going to come at this from maybe a different angle. If you did the tent, we're going to talk about some of the similar things, um, but also kind of break down a little bit of other things. So here we go. Habits. We have this idea that we should be doing it all, that we should be able to be like on top of it all, be on top of all of our routines and our habits. And like, that's just a lot. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> like, we don't always have time for that. So like, I don't know what you want, Brenda, but like, no. So first off, let's start with giving ourselves just a bucket of grace. Let's start with the premise that we're doing the best we can with what we've got available, right? We're making the best choices we can with our resources and what we have and our options and our ideas. Um, and so, so often when we have this habit conversations, when we read self-help books, when we listen to podcasts, when we watch videos like these, we come into it with an I'm lacking mentality. I suck mentality. If I could just X, Y, Z, I would be so much better. And I just, that just, it's, I mean, Brene Brown says shame is not conducive to shame. And Jet said something really good at the 10. And it was that shame is an interrupter of joy. Um, but I would like to just bring in that shame is a sign of embarrassment and um, and like nervousness, right? Of something being seen that you don't think should be seen. And so I just wanna say that if during this conversation or during this month, cause now we're at the end of it, that you've had kind of like this, like, ooh, like that ache feeling of like, I don't want people to see me and the things I'm going through that it's welcome here in this space, right? Um, we can't, people do have this conversation all the time and don't talk about this. But I think when we keep our shame, not just to ourselves, but when we're embarrassed to ask questions around it, it puts almost like this protective shell around it. So even if we're learning things, we won't allow it to kind of sink in. Does that make sense? Like we can know things, but not let it sink in of like, what would this look like if I shifted in this way? And can I, because then our anxiety pops up with like, oh, here's all the reasons X, Y, Z, why you can't do this. Or like, you could never, or like, you're not good enough to do X, Y, Z, right? Like our inner critic has their own heyday. And if you don't know what an inner critic is, go watch the creativity video. We break it all down. There's a whole meditation, not meditation, but the tent goes into it too. Um, also, our Western society is geared for you to think that you have to do it all and for you to get rewarded for living in loops. And what I mean for that is capitalism and supremacy. And um, I mean, it survives on you doing the same thing, not complaining, getting by, being okay with just like, -da 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 -da, like clicking in, clicking out, doing the like so many things you get rewarded for by doing the same thing over and over again, right? Like Netflix, like queues up with your next one. I am currently season five, I think of leverage in like the span of like two months, maybe a month. Um, so like, I'm, I'm also here, right? So just like, let's level the playing field here. Um, these are also things that we're all learning and we're all working on, but we get rewarded for loops. We TikTok pops up another video, Instagram, you find some, like it keeps you there. Doritos, like the way that Doritos are flavored, make you want to pick up more. So we have this cue response trigger or cue response, cue craving response reward that happens. And, and we keep going back and and we're, re we're rewarded for it um, and we're trained for it in our world. Um, there's less like relaxing unpatterns. The world loves a pattern. We love patterns. We love knowing what to do and what habits reward us. So let's also bring that into here too. Okay. Okay. So carrying on. Um, <coughs> I always say awareness is the first step to change. Awareness is the first step. And so tonight, let's bring awareness to the table. A habit that you want to shift does not mean it's a bad habit. It's a habit that has protected you. It's a habit that has served you in one way. It's a habit that has saved you. It's a habit that has helped you. Um, so we can think just like there's no bad emotions, right? There's just emotions that are all signposts. Some are just a bit more fun to experience in our body than others. 
um, just like cliff ahead in five, like that sign, still road sign, just like a stop sign, you know, or a Autobahn hundred miles per hour sign. It's still a stop sign. It's just like, oh, the sign wasn't here. Like I'm about to fall off a cliff because there wasn't a road close sign way back at right. Like, so there's, think of them as road signs. There's just a variety that we have. Habits are the same way. Yes. Are there detrimental habits? Of course. Are there dangerous habits? Yes, of course. And there's a reason you have that habit in the first place. And if we don't acknowledge that, that bit right there, the whole conversation is not worth having, in my opinion. Um, and honestly, this is something I was thinking of tonight and I didn't even mention at 10. Because when we're like, oh, I want to wake up earlier because, you know, to work out or whatever. Okay, cool. But if you're going to bed at midnight, your body is, is helping you. I should have flesh these habits out more. So work with me. Um, your body is in the habit of needing more sleep to help you function the next day. So that's a terrible, terrible metaphor that I just used. Okay. <clears throat> Give me a moment, please. Okay. Bad habit. Drinking alcohol to cope, right? You use this because it helps to process the day or just mute everything so you can relax, so you can get some other things done, right? The best thing about it is that it just, it's easy, it's quick, it's painless, mostly I suppose, and like helps you transition, right? So that's a habit, that's just a habit, might not be conducive to like all the goodness, but it's delicious. Then maybe you want to shift it, but the reason you had that in the first place is because it was easy and supportive and helped you get to where you were going. Yeah. Maybe other things that you could do is go for a walk, go lay in the woods, do a meditation. And the fact of the matter is there might not be something, maybe there is, there might not be something that's as quick and easy as alcohol is. Does that make sense? So like sometimes you have to acknowledge why you chose the thing in the first place because of why you needed it, why you wanted it, why it was your go-to. Why do we, when we want to calm down or distract ourselves, we hop on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, Netflix, instead of like calling a friend to chat or like journaling, right? Because sometimes we just want that distraction. We just want to like turn off. So if we can acknowledge why we need, what are we actually craving? It helps because then we can be honest with ourselves. And sometimes admitting what that craving is touches on that shame, right? And you don't have to tell me your things. That's going to all live in your journal. So just full permission to let this be whatever it is for you. And that's okay. And something might be coming up right now. And if you want to share that in the guild, great. And if not, that's okay too. No pressure. Okay. So make a list. And um, I encourage you to watch the tent because we go through this. So we're not going to go through this here. Go watch the tent. Um, but make a list of different habits. And maybe there's good habits. There's like basic habits. Like I put on clothes in the morning. That's a habit. You get used to something. Like you make these connections in our brains. Neural links. I don't know. There's a fancy word for them. But you make connections in your brain. Do this. Then I do this. I wake up. Use the bathroom, put on my clothes, brush my teeth, make my toast. That's not true. I brush my teeth at the end of all of this. Um, make my toast, make my shake, go have my sacred time, brush my teeth when I get to places. So like you have those patterns. Those are also habits, right? Almost everything. What is it? Somebody said like 70% of our day is unconscious. We're just We go through like, and you almost get in a hypnotic state sometimes. So have you ever been driving? And then you're like, where did the last 10 minutes go? And you're like further down the road. And you're like pulling off and you don't really remember. It's because your brain kind of went in autopilot. Sometimes we just go on autopilot and that's our habits. So by bringing awareness, we're kind of like pulling ourselves, you know, we're just like, like slightly underwater when you hear thrum, thrum, thrum. So think of that as like, sometimes we live our life in like the thrum, thrum, thrum. And sometimes we have to to survive and to get by, right? Sometimes there's just like, it's so overwhelming that you're just like, okay, I'm just going. And so if it is possible for you to like pop up even for a second, cool, great, do so. It's possible for you to pop up longer and have some more clarity on what you want to do. Great. 
if there's a way for you to feel safe, right? Maybe you don't look at your habits until you have a weekend free or you have a day free or you have an afternoon or you do this on your lunch break when you've got the biggest part of your day done, right? A lot of this is safety in your body too, because if your body doesn't feel safe, you're not going to do things because you're going to shut down. I'm going to shut that down. Um, interesting. It's like, that's why these are called mermaid museums. They're not called perfect museums because we're not, right? Um, I just... There's so many things missing from the conversation as a whole in self-help world and habits, just all the stuff about why we do the things we do and how just like pushing through and like shoving, it's just a very intense language, right? Like like the just do it, cool. Great. Yeah. Sometimes you can, and sometimes you have to just do the work and your soul work shouldn't feel that forced. Maybe sometimes it does, but like maybe for our habits, we can kind of come at this with like a grandmother mode. Maybe not like angry Russian grandmother, like not like total babushka, but just like nourishing, like chill grandma that makes cookies. And it's like, okay, hey, what would feel a little bit better? What would be a little bit better feeling habit, right? Okay. So if you made your list of habits, you can pause this if you'd like. Look for the loop, right? Sometimes say habits, I pick up my nails or I, um, no, I never do the laundry or um, I don't clean very often. I should more. Okay, cool what's your cue craving response reward and like if it's something like I should clean more that's not necessarily like a that's not necessarily a habit that's a should right so maybe when you see dirty dishes piling up or like the laundry over thing what happens there that's the habit that's happening that could link up to clean dishes or something else could as well but hear me out so like if you see I'm going to use dishes as an example because this is, I have dishes in my kitchen that I need to clean today. You see the dishes instead of cleaning them or be like, okay, I'm going to put three away or I'm going to set a time to do this later. You're like, this is too much right now. I need to go like do something else that's less stressful. Your cue is, oh, dishes. Your craving is like, get me out of here. Like, I don't want to do this. Like, uh, like maybe later, like just get me out. Like your craving is like safety. You're craving safety and you're craving like clean space. So maybe you go to another part of your house that's more clean and your response is to get away or to do something else or to not disassociate, but to like, you know, and then your reward is you don't see the dirty dishes. I mean, you will, when you walk back in, but like your reward is you get to hang out in a clean space or you get to hang out in a relaxing space. Now let's say that you love doing dishes and or laundry or whatever, you know, the thing is you see the dishes and you're like, oh, oh, there's mess. Like, uh, like this doesn't feel good. And cue trigger potato, tomato could be the same thing. Right. So, um, you see the dirty dishes and you're like, ah, I don't like this. And you're like, I really want to like your craving is like a clean, clean space that you can think in. Right. And so instead of leaving your response is cleaning and putting away. Maybe you set a timer for 10 minutes. Maybe you set a timer for five minutes. Maybe you don't set a timer at all and you just get it done. Um, and then you clean is your response and your reward is that the dishes are clean and you have space to think is clean. But do you see how you want a clean space is sometimes the same craving, but it can act different ways. But if you're just like, I should just clean the dishes you're not looking at like, okay, what do I need? What do I want? So like we can reward ourselves, check out the tent, check out Gretchen Rubin's work um, about upholder question obliger rebel because we're not going to dive into all of that because we did that during the tent. Um, more goodness for you. Um, essentially there's four tendencies that people have. Remember we're not pigeonholing or just saying like, hey, we lean one way or another. Sometimes in work you lean one way and sometimes at home you lean one way and like sometimes around certain people we're different places. So just flexibility, openness. It's just another way to help understand ourselves. 
um because i know sometimes we have feelings about like labels um and so there's the upholder who has no problem like their expectations of holding them there's the obligers hello me um that will do stuff for other people there's rebels who are like f you and your expectations like i'm gonna do it my own effing way um and then they do out of spite or just because like it's a goal they don't have and then there's questioners who are like okay but like why are we doing this like can you please explain so in the tent i go more in depth gertrude ribbon has a quiz i threw it up and i'm pretty sure i put it up in the drill i'll double check um okay so all of these things can help us too of like why we do things so like a rebel might look at dishes and be like well everybody else i should clean the dishes but like maybe for them their thing is like actually i have a really hard time imagining what a rebel does but maybe for them their thing is like i like feeling in control of my space and so i'm going to clean my dishes so that like it's the exact way i want to do it and i use the soap i like lavender vanilla sunshine um you know for an obliger like I use Habitica and it's like kind of like a habit tracker thing. And so I get like points when I do things throughout the day. I should put cleaning on my Habitica. I should totally put cleaning on my Habitica. That did not occur to me till just now, but that would be really smart. And I like it because I lose points if I don't do certain things. And I'm like, no, like I did the thing. And then like, I can't lie. Um, I guess I could do an app, but I haven't thought about that. Anyways, um, for an upholder, it might be as easy as just washing dishes, right? A questioner for them, why is it important to wash the dishes? Why does it feel important to have that clean space, right? And then answering that for you, right? I have people coming over and I want to impress them, or I feel better when I'm in a space that's just for me. Maybe you could care less when somebody comes over, but it feels good to cook in the morning or wake up in the morning to a clean kitchen. Like, I love that feeling. It happens once in a while. Right. Um, so like we're just being honest here that there's different reasons for a habit that's not going to work the same. So I can't just like prescribe like here's a new habit thing for you. It's switching the way you're thinking about it and figuring out like what's your loophole, what's your back end entry into this habit that you want to cultivate and shift and change. Okay. So now here's like AJ, how do we do that? Great question. Um look at possible responses right when we catch ourselves in a craving like i gotta get out of here it's kind of like having a panic attack or anxiety attack right like just like oh and it's like i need safety okay so then we go huddle in the corner we grab our favorite blanket we get a hot thing or we have in the hot tub or we go for a walk or we listen to like calming music right we have these things that like calm or tend ourselves and so when we have a craving to feel safe I most of them come down to feeling safe, honestly, um, or having security or love, or like if you break down habits enough, a lot of them come down to like basic stuff. And so that helps you think like, why am I making it so complicated? Because there's layers. We are onions. We are like ochres, right? We are like a parfait. Everybody loves parfait. Okay. So think about multiple responses to this. Okay. Hey, oh, I want a clean space. Hypothetical A, I am literally late. I am running out the door. I don't have time to do a single dish. Great. Get out the door, go to your thing, come back later and do it, right? Like that's a possibility, right? Okay, but like, let's say you have 10 minutes. Let's say you have an hour, right? You see the dishes, I want a clean space. Response one is what we did before. Just go to another space that feels cleaner and go distract or do something else, right? Because we just don't want to deal with this too. Response number two, set a timer for like five minutes. Put away five minutes worth of dishes, start the washer, cool. Response number three, do it till it's done and just be like, okay, we're going to suck it up. Throw on some rock music, throw on some like Celine Dion or like whatever fills your boat. Honestly, half of my cleaning chores are done to Viking music on the loudest setting possible. And I just like, get weird about it so um also um one thing i have been really liking lately is the rule of three just putting away three things when i leave and that means half the time there's a lot of things that are half picked up and it's working ish for me right now but like that's where i'm at so like maybe that's also a possibility 
um, something I saw on uh, Reddit or in, in somewhere on the interwebs, right? It was like, run the dishwasher three times. And so it's like, is there an easy way to do this? Could you buy paper plates? Could you buy like throw away stuff if you need um, for laundry? Okay, like you can only feel like you do, you can do laundry. Well, unders and like socks or things you gotta, could you just buy some extra underwear for now so that you don't have to do laundry as often, right? So sometimes there's like workarounds. Could you hire some food out if you're just like, ah, oh, like the queue is like, I'm really hungry. And the craving is like, I want food, but like, I didn't make any and I don't really wanna make any. It's like, what's possible here, right? Like, what are our plan A and B? I'm watching Leverage right now and they have like 10 plans, right? It goes A, B. So like have your system and then like maybe, like, and you can journal this out and make like a chart of like, okay, when this happens, here are my things to choose from because in the moment we get overloaded and we go back to our basics. But if we know kind of like, oh, hey, I can pick from this. We can have that like slow, like matrix moment of like slowing down time of like, what do I want to choose in this moment? I have five minutes. Do I really want to do it? No, but like, we're going to try to do something different. This isn't always going to feel good. Let's also say that sometimes creating new habits totally sucks. I wish people also said that more. Like sometimes self-growth sucks. Sometimes self-awareness just is not fun. It just, it's just true, right? Um, and the, sometimes people say like happy things after that. But I'm just not, I'm just not. Sometimes it's just not fun. Um, but sometimes we have to choose. And if we don't want to do a workaround and we don't want to do something else and like we got it, like then choose the least painful option. Choose the least painful option. Um, one of my friends, Ali, said something like, do something for 10 seconds. Just 10 seconds. 10 seconds of cleaning or 10 seconds of making rice or meal prep. I don't know. But does that make sense? Um, let me know if you have any questions about that. Um, but I have found that to be very helpful. Um, for me, 10 seconds, I feel like that's like three breaths. So I usually say like five minutes. 10 minutes sometimes feels like forever. Um, but five minutes feels doable. So maybe yours is two minutes. Maybe yours is three minutes of like, okay, like I'm just going to fill up the sink and let everything soak. Cool. Great. Fabulous. You know, or uh, yeah, I'm just going to throw these things away and buy new. I don't know. Lots of options. Um, you know, or like, uh, I'm going to go like New Year's is coming. Right. So everybody's going to make new habits. I should probably make this public for people to see and embody and enjoy. Um, we'll talk about that until January, because everybody's going to be making new habits and they're going to share themselves as well to do that. And it's like, I'm going to go to the gym five days a week and it's going to be great. I go to the gym. I love the gym. And it's a habit I had to build, right? And be, and also because I know myself, because I'm the pleasure. So like, let's just not set the bar so high that we fail and then be like, see, I knew it. I'm dumb. I'm terrible. I'm not smart. I could never do this. I'm not good enough. Like, that's just like, you don't go from here. You don't go from here. I don't like this. This idea. You don't go from here to here in a skill that you've never learned before, right? We're learning new things. You don't knock a kid over for falling off his bike. Well, they fall off their bike on their own. But like, you don't judge someone for learning something new, right? Like, give yourself grace. You haven't learned this yet. You haven't learned it yet. Should you have already? I don't know. You were busy learning other things. You were busy surviving. You were busy getting by. You were busy trying to be safe and do other things, right? Like, it's all connected. I feel a little bit like the red string conspiracy guy. So make a list. Give yourself some options. Put it on the wall. I have a like a self-care list for um, these last like, this last year, I've been dealing with panic and anxiety attacks for the first time in a while. It's been a few years since I've struggled with it. And um, it handed me my butt on a platter, to be completely frank with you. And so I've had to make myself like a self-care list of like, okay, when I feel it, here are my options. Do I have five minutes? Do I have 10 minutes? Do I have half hour? Do I have an hour? Do I have a day? You know, sanctuary days is a part of new habits I've cultivated because I had a craving for safety and I had to figure out a way to weave it in my days when I, my days were kind of slammed. Does that make sense? Like it can look like a lot of things, but you've got to ask, you've got to ask the question, what are you craving? Got to get honest and you got to be honest here. 
you want to be honest with me? You got to be honest with yourself. And that's sometimes the hardest because once we know something, we can't unknow. And like, I hear you, friend. That's scary sometimes, right? And here's the other part of it is that like our life is also our responsibility. And there are social, economic, and things that press on us and change and alter the way that different people experience life and the way they go through it. And there are things in our control that we can shift, even if they're small shifts. So like you have to work a lot every day. Maybe you're in a job you don't like. Okay. What can you shift? What is in your control? Could you change your route to work? Could you play a podcast you'd like on the way to work or an audiobook that's like fun instead of like learning? Like lately I've been listening to audiobooks and then I'm like, I just, I, I don't want more words in my brain right now, like podcasts or audiobooks. So I'm just like listening to upbeat, like pop music. I'm like, okay, like, hey, okay, cool. You know, and it helps. Um, maybe you need to paint your walls a fun color if you're in your house a lot or, or like, okay, hey, like I feel really lonely. Okay, like Thursday nights, we're gonna hop on a call, a Zoom call with some friends or I'm gonna make friend dates and set them up with different friends throughout the month. Or I'm gonna go put myself in a class, like go check your calendar of events, right? So like there's things we can actively seek out and adjust like, okay, hey, I'm really terrible at meal prepping, but like HelloFresh or HEB or like what is super simple meals? Like one of my favorite is like one cheat meals, one pan meals, also crock pots. Crock pots are the best. This book, the book I wrote, brought to you by crock pots um, and HEB and other things. But um, yeah, so maybe that's not the best like go team, go, let's cultivate new habits and like new year, new you. But like, I don't really have the energy for that right now. And I don't think you do either. Like every, not everyone, a lot of people are just quite toast right now. And I don't think what we need is another person yelling at us, telling us how we failed at life. Like, and I don't really, we don't, I'm gonna speak for me. I don't really need people telling me like, A, you suck at this. And, or like, B, like, go harder, like push. No, like, no, no, no. And no prosperity gospel, no, none of that. Just buckets of grace because you made the choices you made because you had to make them or you felt like you had to make them. And because you were doing the best with what you had at the moment. And that might feel like a cop out to you, but honestly, when you look at it seriously enough, it's kind of terrifying, A, because if it applies to you, it applies across the board. And, um, and that just takes on a whole connotations of itself um, and kind of makes me more terrified for the earth and also like more like relief and hopeful, but also scared. And, um, and maybe it will give you a little bit of grace. Because like this self-flagellation and stuff is just, we don't have time for it. So I encourage you to join me in your habit growth world to do this with the self-flagellation. And when you see it comes up because self-flagellation is a habit in and of itself, just say, hey, ooh, thank you. Yeah, usually we would get really upset with ourselves right now. But like right now, I'm bringing kindness on board. Think of it like a road trip. If you've read Big Magic by Liz Gilbert, she talks about um, she talks about going on a road trip with creativity. I love soul trips. And creativity is taking us on an adventure on the road trip. And she says, everybody says, I'll start when I don't have any fear, when I'm not scared anymore. She's like, that's terrible. Fear's always going to be there. Fear's in the car. Fear's on the road trip. And I was like, oh. And she's like, the key is fear sits in the backseat. Fear does not touch the music. Fear does not in charge of snacks. Fear does not get to drive. And fear does not touch navigation. Fear doesn't do any of those, but fear's on the road trip. And it's gonna be like, oh my gosh, like make sure you take your turn. Okay, thank you. I have the, we never have to ask for directions again. We have the GPS. And so, hey, okay, fear's on board, shame's on board. 
We're a little scared, is on board. What else could be on board? Could we invite kindness to join us? Could we invite some curiosity on what this might look like for us? On what a new habit, maybe we have to get a little creative, right? Ah, my favorite word. And is it, is it my favorite word? I don't know, it's up there in my top 10 though. Maybe um, we invite a little tenderness. Can we mother ourselves a little bit? Can we nurture ourselves a little bit? Can we bring in some nurturing energy? Because like, I feel like it's totally missing. It. Um, and we could use some, you know, we could use some. Think about how good you feel when someone gives you a hug and you can, <sighs> maybe, maybe we can invite ourselves to be that person for ourselves to feel a little bit more safe around to say, you know what? This isn't exactly the way I'd like to show up. I don't know what to do either. Throw in the joy guilt, journal it out, and then, hey, it'll be okay because I'm learning. I'm trying a new thing. I've never done this before. I'm learning. I'm going to therapy for the first time in a while. And, um, and there are things I'm learning for the, like the first time ever. And I said something the other day and she was like, Yes, this, this is adulting. I was like, I, this is very new to me. I don't know this. And I felt like a hot bucket of shame about it, about not knowing this thing, that it's like, this is how adults react. And she even gave me a weird look. And I was like, and I could feel it, right? Like we feel shame rising. And like, if we can be a safer place for ourselves to grow and learn, like, hey, that's just, that's helpful for other people. Yes. But like, also, let's cultivate ourselves for ourselves. Sure, if it helps other people, that's cool too. But like, you deserve goodness and you deserve safety. Disregarding literally everybody else. Will they benefit by you being a safer person? I have had that marks on my hands, so that's what that is. I didn't burn myself. Yes, but also you will benefit. Your nervous system will feel safer. You will feel safer. You will feel better, calmer. Um, so just like also do some journaling, do some free writing. Y'all know how I feel about free writing, but like do some free driving on what would make me feel safer in my day-to-day -day life. What would help me focus or feel better in my life or in my schedule? Like, what would I love to cultivate in my life? And like, it doesn't always look like more. Sometimes we want to cultivate less. Sometimes less is more. This is coming from glitter AJ too. Sometimes less is more. Um, and the same goes for habits. Also, let's not try to fix like 17 habits at the same time. There's, um, I have a planner somewhere around here. I don't know. It's around here. And there's a habit tracker and there's like 10 habits for the week to track. And I'm like, no, I use it maybe like one week a month. I don't think I've touched it in like four months. But like, well, now I have a bit of gut too, but I'm just like, just pick one. Let's just give ourselves slowness. There's an Oracle deck card in my thing. It's grandmother spirit or grandmother, Anna, grandmother, Jesus or something. And, um, and there's a mother, Sophia card or a mother card or nurture yourself. There's both of those. I love when they come up because it's just, yeah nurture ourselves so let's nurture ourselves through this habits conversation now that we're in the end of the month just allow just just allow some nurturing please please because i like the person watching this they are worthy of goodness and love and kindness and like whew, yeah okay so that's all i have for you woot, woot, woot. like totally different turn than maybe what you thought. Maybe this is exactly what you expected from a habits conversation, but I think it's what we need to have in a habits conversation. It's what we need to have in all of our self-growth conversations because I just, just, I don't have patience for the anymore. There's totally a place for all the like excitement and joy and goodness and creativity. And we need to be having more conversations about why we do the things we do giving ourselves some patience and grace and rest um yeah I maybe mean, that's just reflective of where i'm at and that's okay as well so we're giving ourselves grace and rest and nurturing okay 
I love you. Sing your soul song and have.